Welcome back, guys, and today we're actually checking out a 1993 Dodge Ram that is kind of a little bit different than any of the Dodge Rams we've seen in the past. Now, this is very obviously a first gen. It's an extended cab, and I did a little bit of research, and I wanted to make sure that this was actually like... So, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I believe that the moderate little, like, the, the small cab extension with the small window is the extended cab, and an actual four-door would be a crew cab. I believe... I'm getting my terminology right on that one, but if I'm not, let me know in the comment section down below. Now, this truck is actually going to be really interesting because I believe it's got quite a few different customization options that really kind of, you know, make it its own truck and give it its own sort of flair. But also, I love the gigantic intercooler that you can see behind the grill. But without any further ado, let's fire this thing up, get it into the garage, and see what all we can do to it. Classic 12-valve sound. All right, so... As far as what we would use this truck for, or what you could use this truck for, I believe it's one of those trucks that you could use for just about anything in between, you know, scouting on a campaign map, to trail riding on like an open world, you know, off-road park style map, really whatever you wanted to really do with it. Now, let's see. We've got a stock 5.9 12-valve and a tuned 5.9 12-valve. Let's go ahead and throw the tuned one in there. Six speed is the only gearbox you get, but honestly, I'm not really at all bothered by that because it gives you all of the ratios you would really ever need in a truck like this. Suspension wise, you've got quite a few options. So you start with stock or stock ish, then you go up to lifted, then we have lifted towing, and then we have stock towing. So if you wanted to haul goosenecks or something like that and you wanted a little bit of extra support in the back uh, for the extra weight, I would definitely recommend going with one of the towing focused suspensions. And what I think I'll do is I'll go with the lifted towing tow first, and then after I get it outside, hook a trailer up to it and test out the towing capacity, then I'll use the dev tools to take the trailer off and then throw the normal lifted suspension on it. So we'll throw lifted tow on it right out of the gate. Now, in terms of the wheels and tires, you're going to start off with a set of 37s, and you've got TSL Boggers, Nitto Mud Grapplers, you've got IROX, you've got BFG MTs, Maxxis M90 60s, which actually look really, really good. You've got BFG Crawlers, KO2s, Super Swampers, and then the list restarts once you get into 40-inch tires. Now, once you scroll through all of the 40s, you also have 44s as well, and i got to say, the 44s look really, really good on this thing, but it all depends on what kind of look you're going for. If you're going for, like, a you know, like a, not necessarily like a stock plus type look, but like a small lift and, you know, fairly decent sized tires, I would go with the 37s or the 40s. And if you're wanting to have like, you know, a properly huge rig, definitely go with the 44s. So let's see. I think for this setup, I'm going to go with the 44 inch Maxxis M90 60s. I don't really use those very often, but I'm really excited to see how they do here. Now, winch wise, you only get one winch, which I, I figure that that winch is probably going to be an offline winch, but we'll have to see once we dive into the driving. And then I'll definitely throw the gooseneck hitch in the back. Rear bumper wise, you can have a you can have a rear bumper there, or you can take it off, or you can have a um, uh, like a, a painted bumper, which I'll definitely install. Then we have a couple of different trailer hitch options. So you've got to uninstall the trailer hitch. Then you have a normal like you know just tow hitch, and then a long extended tow hitch. So let's see, long trailer hitch for towing with the camper. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, right for the slide in camper. Gotcha. Okay, so that's actually really cool that they give you that option. So let's do the normal hitch for now. And then this camper right here is actually really, really cool because I feel like this is one of the few times we've actually seen a slide-in camper like this. And actually, if you look inside, everything is modeled. Up there in the loft, you can see a couple of sleeping bags with some pillows. And then inside, you can actually see like a kitchen, a sink, some of the cabinets. You can see a table. So actually, in all reality, this is a full, ready-to-go, like, camping slash overlanding type setup, and I really dig the way it looks. I'll put it in there for now, and then I'll take it back out again with the dev tools once we start doing some other things. Now, grill-wise, we have a stock grill or a blacked-out grill. I really like the look of the blacked-out grill. Trim-wise, we've got blacked-out trim, chrome trim, or badges. Now, let's go ahead and put the Ram 250 badges on there and run the blacked-out trim. And then the extra weight, you can throw that on the front if you're going to be doing some really heavy towing. Tailgate-wise, you can do a stock tailgate or a stock tailgate with a black accent, but I'm not going to do that as of right now because we have the camper in there. Tail lights, you've got the stock tail light trim or the blacked out tail light trim. Again, not going to mess with that because we got the camper in there. And then we will do the blacked out front bumper. And as far as wheels go, you have these black American racing wheels, chrome American racing wheels, and then kind of like, you know, again, another classic style off-road wheel that you can paint either chrome or black. But I'm going to leave the American racing wheel 
materials on there for now because I think they look really good. Now, standard color wise, you get this nice bright red, but you can also have a lime green, you know, fully blacked out. You can have like kind of like an off white. And the cool part about this is that it actually not only changes the color on the truck, but a lot of the accent colors underneath the truck, like for example, on the diff covers, on the shocks. Actually, it's got, let's see, the shock bodies, the little, um, the little steering assist. It looks like it's got another little, um, like I can't tell if that's just a stabilizer or if he meant that to be sort of like a little hydraulic steering assist, um, like Ram. Uh, if he did, then there aren't really any lines there for it, but it's probably just a stabilizer. So, ooh, I really like it in the yellow. I don't know why, but I think it looks really, really good. Now, let's see. I like it in the blue as well. They All the colors on this truck look awesome. They really, really do. You really can't go wrong with any of these. I actually kind of dig the green. Funny enough, I really do now oh that like darker kind of like almost olive green but not quite yeah really really dig that but I think I'm kind of half tempted to go with the red because that's the default color. But you know what? Yeah, we'll go with the red on this one. I feel like I've done a couple of other trucks that weren't red lately. So not every single truck has been red. Now, actually, now that we've got this thing outside, let me do a little bit of a free cam experiment and actually go inside the camper because this is super cool. Now, if you look in here, you've got like a proper like door. You've got a sink with actual like knobs and everything on it. Oh, dude, look at this. And you can actually see through into the cab of the truck. You've got like a table here and I'm sure that this could also like the table would probably fold away and this would double as another bed And then up here you got a couple of sleeping bags in the loft I think it's a really really well done camper setup and I love the fact that he actually went to the trouble to put it in game Now as far as trailers go I definitely think that I'm gonna need to do the extended uh, hitch setup and I don't know why I didn't do that right off the bat But let's see uh, let's see. take that off there we go, camper hitch, and as you can see, now the trailer hitch comes out a little bit further towards the back of the truck, which is going to allow us to tow trailers even with the camper installed. Now, let's pull it forward just a little bit. This would be perfect for any kind of, like, camping roleplay. It would be absolutely amazing for it. Now, this sideboard trailer actually might work really, really well for this truck's height, and funny enough, it actually really does. I mean, it leans down a little bit, but not enough to where it would be an issue whatsoever. So let's see, let's throw some weight behind this thing. And, oh, we can throw a container back there. We can throw cement back there. Let's do packaged sand. I mean, packaged sand isn't all that bad. And when you consider the fact that we don't have any front weight on this truck, I mean, it's doing an amazing job of pulling this around. Now, I will say the fact that that is a really heavy duty double axle trailer is definitely helping our case here. But at the end of the day, I mean, the truck is still giving us an absolutely admirable performance for sure. I mean, with the Tune 5.9, it really isn't even all that bothered that it's got the sand back there at all. It's really not. Let's see how it fares through the river. Come on. Oh, bro, this thing rips. And all you have to do, if you start to feel it wanting to change gear, but, like, it doesn't quite know what it wants to do yet, just flick the clutch button and you'll be fine. Nice and easy. I wonder, if I try to do the hill climb with a trailer behind it, will it do it or will it just flip the cargo off? Let's find out. Put the power to it. Dude. That's awesome. Now, if we were to flip the cargo at the top of the hill, that would be entirely just, like, my fault. But what? It did that in two-wheel drive. Bro, it did that in two-wheel drive. Okay. That's a bit of a... Wow, that's a bit of an upgrade. The fact that it did that in two-wheel drive, that's pretty immense. All right. So, let's unpack and remove... And then detach trailer, delete trailer. And now we're going to do a little bit of crawling with it. Now, before we do any crawling, I am going to switch out the suspension. And let's see. So let's do lifted. Now, the lifted one is going to be a little bit less. Well, does it have, does it have active modes? It does not have active modes. I wonder how heavy the actual camper is. And maybe you sh you're supposed to use the, uh, the hauling suspension with the camper. Let's see. No, I mean, it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like it adds all that much weight. Yeah, it doesn't look like it adds all that much weight, so let's try it like this. Let's try it like this and just see what happens. Now, obviously, that rear overhang is going to be, you know, atrocious, but that's not the truck's fault. I mean, I just want to see what kind of limits we can push with a camper on the back of this thing, and so far, it hasn't phased it. It actually hasn't phased it at all. The tuning is amazing. Like, the tuning is genuinely on freaking point. I love it. 
Wow, like it actually legit just lumbers right over those rocks with no issue whatsoever. With the lifted suspension, now that I've done that section back there, and I know it's a very small section, but I would have total confidence taking this thing out to a map like TNB Trails or something like that, and just, you know, honestly, I feel like it could hang with the rest of them in terms of like some really good crawlers. Let's throw it into the mud in high and see how it does out here. So far, it does not care. Wow, it does not care. Okay, yeah, let's try the... Bro, bro, are you si bro, are you serious? Wow! That's high range, by the way. It did not stop, dude. It did not even slow down. What a beast. Holy smokes, that thing... Yeah, this thing moves, dude. And not only does it move out, it doesn't stop in the mud. It's like, no, it slows down a little bit, but... We were in high. Like, we weren't even in, like, automatic mode or low plus. We were in high, and it didn't even phase it. That's a properly well-tuned setup. Let me ease it right on through the dips. Hasn't really shown any signs whatsoever of getting hung up yet, especially getting high-centered. And what I really love is the fact that... Ooh, look at that flex. It actually has a decent amount of it, too, with the lifted suspension. But no, what I really love about it is the fact that it's doing all of this with a slide-in camper... And even though it's got a pretty good amount of body roll and body movement to make it feel a little bit more realistic, it hasn't flipped over. Which, again, like, speaks volumes about the tuning of this truck. He really has done an awesome job with that. Absolutely awesome job. Alright, let's ease it on through here. Not bad at all. And... And it really hasn't even, like, buried the front end of the mud much either. I mean, it did it a little bit, but not to the point to where it would be a problem. Now, let's go ahead and give you a little bit of a repair before we head for, you guessed it, the bridge jump. Now, when we go off the bridge jump, I was originally imagining that having the camper in the back was going to cause, like, this thing to lean back a bunch. But considering the fact that, like, even when I switched to the normal lifted suspension, it didn't really lean back, I actually kind of feel like it might fly kind of level now. Although, in order to uh, minimize the chances of it just completely compressing into the ground, I'm going to add the lifted tow suspension back onto it to give it a little bit more resistance against that suspension compression upon landing. So let's bring you up to where the bridge starts. It's actually got some decent grip on the road, too. I mean, it's not obviously going to be any kind of, you know, highway setup, but really, at the end of the day, it grips incredibly well on the pavement. Now, I know I got a little bit out of sorts there, but that was entirely on me, not on the truck. All right, let's see how you do down the bridge jump. Now, let's go into first person so we can actually see where we're going. All right, here we go. Shift it again, and wow! Bro, you want to talk about level flight? That's probably one of the most level flights off of the bridge jump I have ever seen. I mean, that was that was pre-runner level. That that was genuinely just as good as some of the like, you know, purpose-built, purpose-tuned pre-runners I've taken off of that bridge jump. So, at the end of the day, I mean, this thing is absolutely incredible, and I would highly advise you guys to check it out if you have a chance. Now, with that all being said and done, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions on this truck in the comment section down below. And if you're new around here and you would like to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on, and I will see y'all next time. Talk to y'all later.